What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today's Tuesday, May 12th, starting with the Trade Hacker question of the day. Will the new proposed relief bill get passed by the Senate? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the new proposed bill by the House Democrats, $3 trillion. That's trillion with a T. So what's included with that? Nearly a trillion dollars in relief for state and local governments, a second round of $1,200 per person, up to $6,000 per household, about $200 billion for hazardous pay for essential workers, $75 billion for coronavirus testing, an extension of the $600 per week federal unemployment insurance. So we talked about in a previous video, the the market being up right now over the last several weeks significantly. Um, you know what what's causing that? A lot of that is the just the massive amounts of money that are being pumped into the system. You know, even in just talking to, and this is kind of anecdotal information, but just talking to friends who own local businesses, restaurants, retail places, you know, we're getting ready to reopen here pretty soon, uh, at least at least to a certain capacity. And you know, one of my buddies who owns a restaurant is basically saying, hey, all of my employees who who were working for me previously, I don't know if they're going to come back to work because with unemployment and this extra 600 bucks per week, they're actually making more or the same as what they were making when they were working for me. So why would they come back? And so that was set to expire in July. And now they're talking about extending this to January. So now keep in mind, that doesn't mean that in January when this or when the stimulus money kind of starts to run out, that doesn't mean the, that's when the market's going to go down. It's going to go down. It's going to go down before that. The market is not the economy. The market is going to lead the information, anticipate what's going to happen. So it'll be interesting to see $175 billion in rent, mortgage, utility assistance, and on and on and on. The question is, when does this stop? I mean, the government cannot fund everybody and every business until things just get better. It's just, I mean, hey, we're just going into more, our deficit, we're going into more and more debt. Crazy stuff. Now, this is just a proposal and it doesn't, you know, there's talk about whether the the Senate will actually even pass this. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of lobbying and different things put in the bill and who knows what'll happen, but just crazy, crazy amounts of money being pumped into the system right now. So what's going on in the market? Looking at the S&Ps down 70, Dow down 547, NASDAQ down over 200, Russell down over 48. Uh, we're about 30 minutes after the cash close. I, I've got a, uh, a trading buddy of mine who uh, we talk a lot and, and he was saying, you know, every time the market's down, I feel like the market's crashing again. And it, and it kind of felt like that today, right? I mean, S&Ps down 70, that's a big move, down almost two and a half percent on the day. But the reality is, looking at a daily chart for the last three months, I mean, that, that's just a tiny little blip, right? I mean, for all you technical analysts out there, which I am not, but you know, if you put a trend line here at these two points right here, I mean, that's not even coming down to the trend line. Again, that doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, the trend lines work about 50% of the time anyway. So in, in my mind, they're there's no real advantage to using them, but just looking at that from a from a visual perspective, it's a tiny little blip. Now, if we get some continuation, obviously that's another story. But for right now, that's that's just a nothing nothing move. So, what did we do today? Added a couple pieces to our current positions and just kind of made some adjustments. But the rest of the market, if you look at uh, oil, up six percent. And again, you think six percent? That's a pretty big move in one day. Oil, uh, just a little blip. If we look at Natty Gas, uh, Natty Gas down over seven percent now compared to the last few months. That it's a pretty sizable move. And that's actually just getting us back into center of our current position. So that's a that was a helpful move for us. Some of the other stocks, I mean, look at look at all the red on the screen. I mean, you've got Beyond Meat, which is up almost 5%, was up over 10%, but came off the highs. But most things red here. You got some other tiny little winners. Uber's up a little bit. Walmart's up a tiny bit. Yelp's up a little bit. If you look at the kind of the advancers, I'm looking at the, the largest 100 stocks. See these little green lines here? I mean, that was the high of the day. I mean, the market was up a good portion of the day and then just fell out of bed later in the day. You can see of the 100, 102 actually, declining 92, only six advancers on the day. So a pretty solid correlated sell-off. And if this thing's really going to make a move lower, you know, that's what we're going to see is, is a very highly correlated where everything's moving down. So interesting to look at that. Some of these other stocks. The other thing I was going to point out, AMC, 
theaters. And the only reason I am looking at this is because I actually set up an account for for my kids to start buying some stocks in. And one of my kids loves going to the movies. So he wanted AMC Theater. So I, I said, okay. Now, uh, what's interesting is Amazon has actually come out and there's talks about Amazon buying AMC Theaters. I think is a very interesting thing. I mean, obviously Amazon has their prime they could tie that into you know free passes for prime members going to the movies they could release movies into the amc theaters that are amazon only type movies so there's there's a lot of interesting things that could happen there but if you look at if you look at amc theaters i mean it's trading at just five dollars a share even just a year ago is at 13 if we look at even further back it was at let's just go to a five-year chart I mean, we're talking, it was over $16 a share. That was just back in 2019, middle of 2019. So interesting stuff, starting to see some uh, potential bargain buyers come out of the woodworks. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens on some things like that. You know, you've still got your stocks like, uh, you know, Netflix was down 2% today, but still up. If we look at a, a year-to-date chart, you know, still up 33% year to date and along with a lot of the other companies that are benefiting from stay at home. So again, we've got to, we've got to see these tech stocks really roll over before we're going to see any downside. I talked about the financials yesterday. Uh, Obviously they're getting hit again today. They're down about 31%, but they've really got to make a, a push lower for this thing. So financials and tech are the two things that we're really looking at to, uh, potentially, get this broad market to really roll over if in fact it does. Another thing, bonds, you know, bonds have been in a very, very tight range over the last several weeks. You know, you would think that if if the market's going to roll over, we're going to see a a really uh, sizable pop higher in bonds as well if we do get that flight to quality. But I would not be surprised if we see both go down, if we see stocks go down as well as bonds go down and there's just a, a, you know, a full liquidation of assets from that perspective. You know, you, if you look at gold, which a lot of, th- a lot of people think gold has a, an inverse relationship to stocks. But the reality is if you look at an actual correlation table of stocks versus gold, it really doesn't have much correlation at all. So it's not inversely correlated. It's not positively correlated. It just really has, it's just, and one of the reasons we trade it is because it's actually very uncorrelated altogether to stocks. So a lot of people think it's kind of that flight quality of stocks go down, uh, gold's going to go up, but look what happened in in March even. I mean, when stocks were going down, uh, gold was getting hammered too. And then all of a sudden it, it reverted and started spiking up. So you can't really look at it as a flight to quality or a safe haven or an inverse correlation to stocks overall. So everybody have a good evening and we will talk to you again tomorrow.